Hello, and welcome to 5-Minute Math. Today we are looking at the Algebra 1 concept of attributes of quadratic functions. This is standard A.7a in the great state of Texas, and we are using item number 49, which is a new item type called multiple select off the 2023 released star test. If you haven't done so already, please go ahead and take a moment to pause the video, work this problem out on your own, unpause it, and we will look at our answers together. All right, so this is multiple select. So it says in bold caps, we need to select two correct answers. So watch what happens if I just pick a random one and try to hit next. It is gonna give us that error message. This is a two point problem, right? So we wanna make sure we answer uh, correctly with two correct answers and we're looking for zeros. So the only really clue that we get in this particular problem is that word zeros and unfortunately there's not much context there. There's nothing on your reference materials that re refer to zeros and obviously you know the number zero didn't even show up like are you thinking is it the origin right maybe it's that that's not really what we're talking about. So let's talk about what zeros are because this is a term that actually has a few synonyms and if you can kind of get this into your brain this becomes a pretty simple problem. So what is a zero? Okay. And we'll talk about the synonyms in just a second. Okay. So the zeros so that these are the x values that make f of x equals zero. Okay, so that's where the term zero comes from. We want f of x to equal zero. Now, f of x is, you know, obviously the, the phraseology we use when we're making sure that we double down that it's a function, but sometimes we'll just substitute in that y, right? So what are the x values, or the x value, sometimes it's just one, that make y or f of x equal zero. Okay, now we've got some synonyms here. So zeros are also going to be called solutions. Right, that's a similar term. And then I think the easiest thing to call them is going to be our x intercepts. Now, if you hear the term x-intercept, that's probably going to be more of a dead giveaway, right? We're very comfortable with the term y-intercept, right? The y-intercept is where we cross the y-axis. So the x-intercept is going to be where we cross the x-axis. Because, guess what happens? When we cross the x-axis, that means y equals zero, okay? So we need to take a look to see where is this graph crossing the x-axis. Well, I see one right here. Now, if we wanted to plot the point, right, we could just say this, okay? So this point right here has got an x value of three, a y value of zero. If we wanted to put it back up into here, we could say f of three equals zero. That's why we're calling it a zero. Because if we take the function right there of the x value of 3, if we place that 3 inside the f of x, right, substitute x for 3, you get a 0, right? We also get this right here, negative 1. Now, this is why it becomes a little bit silly to give you the full ordered pair. Sometimes you'll see it like that. But if it's a 0, you know that the x value is going to be, you know, wildly varying, but the y value is always going to be 0. So we could say f of negative 1 is also 0. So that's why it's a little bit easier. Take a look at your answer selections down here. They're just going to give you the x value. They don't want the ordered pair because they know for every single one of these, it is going to be you know, the y of 0. Okay. So look what I've got here. I've got an f of 3 and an f of negative 1. So I'm going to hit this one right here. I'm going to hit this one right here. Now, obviously, we need to go ahead and you know, take this off and bubble it in. So we'll say x equals 3, x equals negative 1, two points, and those two selections are the correct answers for this problem.